and good evening everyone. Welcome to the first episode of School Belong You for this year 2015. This month we have for you the standards based education, back to school preparations and much more. Let's begin the program by looking at how the national government and the education department are addressing the issue of teachers leave fair entitlements. Education in Papua New Guinea is essential to help our people reach the potential and the present government aims at upgrading and improving the system and quality of education. On 19 January 2015, the Minister for Education, Nick Kuman, and Dr. Tapo, Secretary for Education, emphasized on teachers' leave fair, standard-based education curriculum and tuition fee-free policy. The department is ready and uh, we're all ready to roll out and I wish that all the teachers right throughout our country can now, uh, uh, we are looking forward for the return for the 2015 academic year. Teachers leave for entitlements was the issue affecting teachers nationwide during the end of 2014 academic year. The pending leave entitlements issue happens at the end of every year and in this regard, Minister Kuman stated that management should be well aware of the teachers' leave fair and provide it to teachers on time. The department wants to see that uh, the welfare of teachers uh, well must be looked after. They are entitled to those leave and uh, they are entitled to their leave every two years. The Education Secretary stressed that the requirement of the administration and management of the education system is to work closely with their provincial colleagues to make sure that teachers get the leave fair entitlements. Once so those money that's been appropriated for leave fairs 114, once it's been approved, the personal emoluments, and only then each province will determine how much money they've been given in terms of cash into the, into the system to be able to earn out the two teachers, three teachers, or ten teachers. The current O'Neill Dion government, in collaboration with the National Education Department, is now embarking on improving the standard of education from 2015 to 2018 with the standard-based curriculum. The Department of Education will roll out standard-based education starting this year. We'll pace it out over a four-year period. 2015, ele elementary one, prep elementary one and two will start. And 2016, you will see grade three to uh, grade um, grade six. 2017, you will see grade seven to nine, and uh, in 2018 it will be from grade ten to grade twelve. The elementary uh, school students are not affected in any way. We will we will uh, organize it in such a way that. Uh, teachers in the elementary school will attend those training programs in the districts um, on a range where, where they, we have three teachers in one school will program in such a way that uh, all three of them will attend training programs. The only thing that we need to do is the teachers that uh, graduated after 1999 are the concerns that we want to continuously train. Teachers must be competent in teaching in this Teachers' amount of teacher training is very important. Teacher specialization is very important. For the last 40 years, we've tried to do our best with not Now, coming to this, we now correct the teacher's competence in that. And let alone, teach, language instruction has to be far and foremost the most important thing in 2015. That's why we're beginning with elementary teachers. Now we're going to make sure we pay attention to detail, the way you speak English, um, the way you, you structure your English, the way you're able to communicate from elementary prep all the way to um, Great Welcome back to School Belong You. In this segment, we continue our look at the government's initiatives in education. Tuition fee free is a government of Papua New Guinea policy initiated in 2011 and first implemented in 2012. The tuition fee-free policy is a subsidized school fee for all students in Papua New Guinea from elementary schools up to grade 12. Look at the administration component of it, the, uh, 
uh, the commodity or resource component of it and the infrastructure component of it, there's a lot more money going to the school system. One of the government's main intentions of the tuition fee-free policy is to provide accessibility to education and whilst promoting this, they have also encouraged more girls to enter the school system. We have uh, got very encouraging uh, reports that came out from the 2012 and 2013 uh, reports that a lot more girls are entering the school system, but not all girls that is at the school age have entered the school system. So we are encouraging the parents right around the country, please allow more of our girls to become uh, partners of development is through educational. There's no other uh, system that we know. This year, uh, we will complement the TFM by building new classrooms and new uh, teachers' houses. And we will continue to do that until we, uh, we finish the, uh, the currency of this term of parliament. The National Education Board set in November last year, 2014, and approved that there won't be any more project fees to be charged to every child from elementary to grade 12. Simply because the government has provided all the school fees. There is no point for any school to uh, charge any fees. Every child that is supported by the government to enter the school system, the schools have no choice. They must not lock them out. And uh, the decision is very clear. I've given instruction to the secretary to give secular instruction, secretary's instruction to all the provincial uh, uh, education system in the country to ensure that this policy decision must be fully implemented. Any school that uh, imposes the project fees from the students, I will instruct the department to hold back their TFM. You do it right and we'll do it right. The Education Secretary stressed that the money belongs to the school and it should be managed properly by the school boards and principals. All the 10,060 schools were opened last year and they got the money those schools will be getting their money because they are not closed. All right, they are not closed because the bank, are, bank with the Department of Education, we have made an arrangement for the accounts to be open with 100 kina. So uh, all those schools have got 100 kina letting the accounts account not closed. So meaning that if they have not done anything wrong, um, come uh, as soon as the money arrives, in about a week, the money will all be in the school account. Over 30 displaced children here in Port Mosby are being given the chance to education for the first time. Take a look at how this is being done. In today's society, especially in the outskirts of large cities, most children are enjoying the feeling of having a proper home, a home where love is shared and felt. However, not all children in Papua New Guinea have a home. There are other vulnerable children who are suffering from being unloved, neglected, and unhappy. Homelessness is sadly becoming a familiar experience of children in our urban centers, especially in the nation's capital, Port Moresby. Life PNG Care is a small but growing effort to change the lives of street children who are affected by a range of social issues. In assisting children with social problems, Life PNG Care believes in and upholds a child's right to a future. Life PNG Care is basically a non-profit organization. We recognize as a charity. Life PNG Care started last year. And Life PNG Care has a vision. Our vision is really to impact the lives of children. Uh, children who we Every day you see on the streets children who are homeless, children who are living in a situation where there is no one there to provide love and care. Together with its partners, Life PNG Care held its first back to school orientation on the 17th of January this year. This will see a total of 40 orphans and homeless children given the chance to an education through the Strong in Pikinini Act. This is an improvement from last year which saw 17 children being sent to school. Our supporters and partners 
who are also sponsoring these kids to go to school. Uh, we have Action Mobile. We've got uh, PNG Tribal Foundation, uh, Big Rooster, for also hosting our Kina of Kindness charity donation. Children's safety and well-being is commonly second place to community shame and more pressing needs of basic survival. My mother and my mother died. I was able to get the street. I was able to get the market. 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 I was able to get the Pani <laughs> Carry the seven mile. I'm a white man. Bungi mem na. I'm talking white man. Can I help you? White man, give me bag. I'm helping me. I'm. To plus here on story. Lilik name snebim. I'm snebim. Mangi na. I'm salim. Emailim kamlo. Laptop lo. Ticha kolin. Now ticha kolin bin golo. I'm bin golo seven mile. I'm bungi on pa mangi name blem net me. Na I'm sinet. Mangi a net me na. I'm golo Gorens. Gorens lap na. Wana mangi one piece eh. I'm sim. I'm ako running Coca Cola dark stop. I'm running Coca Cola dark stop eh. Man, net ni kau tak? Mungkin net ni yang kau tak kira mana? Orang tu pelak, MC mal tu pelak kam. Orang stalo rainbow time. MC mal tu pelak kam, stalo rainbow. Kari mal gobe gan logo range. Stop na, osem. Mungkin abis lusim life na. Tiada kau lain tak kira mana saya. Mila kira sampel mau mungkin bila pelak planting stop na. Net ni kira contoh ye planting stop. Mila pelak kalau freeway stop na. Semua kira orang stop tiada kalau kira dalam na. MC mila pelak kam. M kalau, mungkin pelak kalau unagi na. M itu fikir mila pelak lap finish. Stop iko, mila pelak kanan begin. Stop lah aku nak mikam liar. Nak mikam mikam liar macam ni. Hama masuk macam tiada kau lihat kisah ni. Mila, mian mama masuk macam bapak tu mula sekolah. Mian mama masuk mula sekolah nak stop liar. Aku mikam stand tu tiada kau lihat. Nampak macam kamu beratang kau cec. Nampak macam lo tu lo tu kau nampak tiada kau lihat kisah ni. Nampak macam stand tem. Nampak dari tu mian dia. Nampak dia mian cecah lihat tu mesti. A final year student at the University of Papua New Guinea is one of these volunteers who finds joy in assisting these orphans and homeless children. During the part of my studies and uh, in my schedule, I usually incorporate time for this uh, organization because I believe that the overnight kids and the, those in the streets, when I give my time to them, it gives me joy and uh, happiness in doing what I uh, teach them. As from last year, Mr. Pake and his family are accommodating 17 children who are orphaned or homeless from different backgrounds and walks of life. To help these many orphans and homeless children, individuals are encouraged to assist Life PNG Care by donating a toy in a Life PNG Care charity box located at any Big Rooster outlet in Port Moresby. once again, we now take a look at some health tips. With the 2015 school year upon us, it is important to be healthy. Here's how you can stay healthy and ready for school. While students are preparing to begin yet another academic year, they need to be reminded of a few health tips. These tips are vital as they will guide students to be healthy as well as physically fit to commence classes. Health experts have clarified why a student should eat breakfast before going to school. It's good for children to have, uh, eat well before they go to school and uh, I think studies have shown that uh, we need to eat properly during the, at breakfast so that when we go to school we, our minds are uh, more open and we are alert at school and um, we concentrate better so 
eating breakfast, a good breakfast means not just bread and biscuit and butter, not tea one time. We need to eat a real good meal, three, the three different groups of uh, food groups we have. At least have some carbohydrate, have some protein and have some uh, uh, energy food so that uh, when you go to school you are concentrating well and you are, you are learning well and it will keep you going on for a longer time. Dr. Gaita also outlines the importance of drinking water daily and the dangers of alcohol consumption. Water is the best uh, form of fluid that anybody can take and uh, we advise that at least uh, people should have uh, eight glasses of water per day and so um, because it's, it doesn't contain any other additives in it, it keeps your mind alert and uh, it keeps you well hydrated so you don't uh, need to need to uh, get other forms of uh, liquids and uh, it's uh, very healthy. There's no added sugar or nothing else inside. So we are encouraging people to have water every day and at least eight cups of water is uh, adequate to keep the body going. And uh, a little bit more if like uh, students you are engaged in sports and you are sweating a lot and perspiring, you need to replace the fluid that you are lo losing. So we are encouraging students to get water to school. Smoking is is, is really bad. It, it, it will affect the health of a person from, from, from the head all the way down to the toe. And um, <clears throat> it's very addictive. So when students start to smoke, they will get addict addicted to it and they will keep smoking. And then from just a plain cigarette, it will go on to other, other different kinds of smokes like uh, marijuana. And um, it affects the mouth, the throat, the lungs, the, the whole of the body systems and uh, people who smoke will actually live shorter lives because they end up getting some kind of illness and they will die earlier. Mm -hmm. And alcohol is also, it's a drug and uh, it's addictive and it has, uh, apart from uh, creating illnesses in a person, in a student, uh, they um, will, will uh, because of their habits, might leave school earlier because they're not concentrating in school, they're getting drunk and they might not finish what they were planning to do for in their lives. Due to the many uses of technology, increasingly young Papua New Guineans are trying out new devices and services. At times, students get carried away with their mobile phone laptops and iPhones and they forget their bedtimes. We are supposed to have uh, at least eight hours of sleep and uh, that eight hours is, uh, is, is uh, able to make our bodies re regenerate and uh, re re recover well so that by the time we wake up after eight hours sleep we are nice and fresh and uh, when we get to school we, we concentrate, we learn more and we are alert. When we stay up late because of the hours of sleep that we've had, you know, sometimes our children, they, they, they are on the mobile phone or they are watching TV or movie or something and they stay up to 12, even up to 1, 2 in the morning. And then uh, they're supposed to get up early 6 a.m. and get ready to go to school, but some of them are still in bed when we are you know, trying to get them up to go to school. And, and because they didn't sleep, sleep well in the night, in the classroom, they tend to either sleep or doze off during classes or they, they don't get messages that the teachers are teaching them so they won't perform well in school. So students, we encourage you to at least have a minimum of eight hours of sleep and that's like sleeping early seven, uh, 8, 9 p.m. In the, in the night and getting up early at four, uh, 5, 6 in the morning. Other health advices have spoken about the purpose of having a school health program in all Papua New Guinea schools. Three quarters of our children in PNG uh, go to school today and they are together in a group. Uh, they share things in, in schools uh, together and it is good that the uh, early detection of illnesses in here is better for referral, for better correction. And uh, healthy children you know, learn teens at school. And this is a good way of communicating to parents and communities through this high school. That is why school is an uh, important place. And we also know that uh, when there is an infection, this is, you know, that is going around. The school is, uh, is a target because of the crowd 
that is in school. That is where you see these inf infections are spreading more easily, like measles and any other infectious diseases. We know that there are problems that are happening in uh, their risky behaviors in schools, like drinking, smoking, drug use, school violence that are happening, and uh, delinquency means uh, we can't control these children. You know, they they have, they say I'm the boss of myself. So these are uh, these are the children are. Uh, uh, we we really cautious of the children in school. Children are difficult to reach at times because you know they are not always sick. So they say that oh, I'm not sick. So and then like and they don't access services. But what we do this year, 2015, it is sort of an action year for us. Uh, we've done memorandum of agreement with the education department. And what we need to do is our nurses getting into the schools. Over the ten, past 10 years, our school health has declined. We know that uh, in southern region, some of the provinces are not doing school health programs, and this has bring us a lot. Through our provincial visits, we have seen a uh, great four, five, six girls getting pregnant as early. That is why we, it is a very biggest concern for us, which is also contributing to 733,000 mothers dying each year. And we know that there is a percentage of young uh, girls who are dying at early. That is why school health is very important for us to bring out there. And what we are going to do this year in, in schools is that our nurses are going to do school health programs uh, according to the MO, MOE that is signed between the, our nurses are going to get into schools, immunize the children from school entry to school exit. We are going back to the basics that uh, uh, health, school health used to be. Health promotion in schools will continue this year. The health department is also planning to extend these health promotional activities to tertiary institutions soon so that all students can benefit from them. This program is called a Health Promoting School. Health Promoting School is a program, uh, it's a setting under the Healthy Island concept from the health department. Um, uh, health promoting school uh, focuses on empowering the teachers, students, staff and the school community to take control over diseases and to be responsible of their own health. Okay, um, health promoting school was, um, uh, was an initiative from the government and it has been recognized by the uh, government of Papua New Guinea and also the health department. So MOA has been signed with the Department of Health and the Department of Education. So uh, this program has been rolled out in 1995 to most of our schools in Papua New Guinea, uh, except for Bougainville, which we are trying to get to by this year. So uh, the vision for this program is to protect and promote the health of the total school population. Um, most of our schools are into this program of promoting health, general health, which covers uh, the school environment, uh, that is uh, water and sanitation, uh, good nutrition, um, the general cleanliness of the school, um, uh, health policies which should be implemented in the schools so that uh, teachers and students and everyone are, are abiding by those uh, health policies which makes them to, to be healthy so that children can learn well as well as teachers are healthy to attend to the students in the classroom. <music>
assessment, grading, and academic report that are based on students demonstrating understanding or mastery of knowledge and skills they are expected to learn as they progress through their education. In a school that takes standards-based approach to education, learning standards, in other words, concise, written descriptions of what students are expected to know and be able to do at a specific stage of their education, determine the goals of a lesson or course, and teachers can then determine how and what to teach students so they achieve the learning expectations described in the standards. The announcement of the standards-based uh, education curriculum. All right, you must have uh, a curriculum. A curriculum, as you already know, is made of syllabuses. All right, where it determines the body of knowledge and skills, and then it is then broken down into subject content. And then those subject content are then broken down the topics and all that. And then those topics are then broken down into lessons. And then teachers teach them. That's the way curriculum is broken down. And so then you teach a 50-minute lesson or half an hour lesson, or you teach a one-week lesson or a number of lessons on a subject. And that's curriculum. That's how it's broken down. And it's called standards-based education curriculum. The aim of this new curriculum is to fully equip students with reading, spelling, counting and writing and other necessary skills at a young age. A five-year-old and a six-year-old child entering school in, in preparatory, in, in preschool, preschool and prep, they must be able to also uh, be able to read and write before they go to grade one. So those are some of the mandatory requirements, a standard that we're now, after 39 years, where we left it in the hands of the teachers and the schools, we are now using the, the law in terms of education act to now sanction it, that no Papua New Guinean child should go to, um, to grade one uh, only after they, have, they can read and write and, uh, and they can count. So we are now going back to doing the writing. In other words, in other words all our children who enter school must read and write before they go to grade one. So grade one will be like a level. You can't go to grade one until you can read and write. And you can't go to grade one until you can count. Developing the country's human resource is important. Education is a key area that plays a major role in educating a nation's citizens. In Papua New Guinea, the national government is looking at improving school systems through the education department. I also understand that the task of providing education services requires significant investment, both in terms of human and financial capacity. The challenge of improving the performance of our schools and the implementation of the new curriculum are huge and the government alone will not succeed in implementing them. Next year, we will introduce the standard-based curriculum. There are a number of initiatives that the Education Department will be working on starting this year, and the Standards-Based Education Initiative is one of them. 2015, the government will now um, roll out, uh, uh, begin what they call the, the 266 system. This is the, the new education system that we are about to do. We used to have um, the, uh, the current system, we have uh, three years of elementary, six years of primary, and uh, the four years of secondary school. Now, although the numbers may twist and turn as some people, but next year we have begun two years of uh, elementary, preschool, and uh, preparatory as elementary, and then grade one to grade six in, the, in primary, and grade seven to grade 12 will be in high school. So next year we begin that policy. It doesn't mean that everyone will do like that, but over time, starting from 2015, we will slowly and gradua gradually work towards uh, two, two years of elementary, uh, six years of primary, and a six years of high school. With this curriculum, students will also learn other responsible and ethical values that will help mold them into knowledgeable and productive citizens of this nation. From day one of 2015 school year, all schools throughout the country must pray on Monday morning. They must sing the national anthem. 
They must sing the provincial song. They must sing the school song. They must raise PNG flag. They must raise the provincial flag. They must raise the school flag. From Tuesday to Thursday, they will have to worship God. They will have to say a word of prayer before they begin school. On Friday, they will lower the flags. They will lower the flags and they will pray before they end school. That's standard-based education. Despite media awareness about the introduction of this curriculum, some students are still unsure about this latest change. According to the Education Secretary Dr. Tapo, 2015 is the trial year for standard-based education in the country. It is the time of the year where the back-to-school fever is on again. Family shops and stationaries are being packed with students and parents. Have a look at some interesting back-to-school shopping done by students in Lei Borobe province. As the start of 2015 academic year nears, students from elementary to secondary schools are preparing to go back to school. Parents have used what's left of the school holidays to buy their children stationaries and school uniforms. In Lei, students and their parents were seen stationary shopping at almost every stationary shop in the city. For some students, the 2015 academic year will be challenging. Joylin Yakali is a student from the Wabek Secondary School. She will be doing her grade 11 this year. For her to secure a space in a secondary school is a big deal. Her excitement to pursue secondary education brought her all the way from Anga Province to do her back to school shopping in Lei. <laughs> Because in my final school, I want a uniform for school. Because in my school, I am blind. I am Spencer Kenny. I am in school of Wonville Primary School. I work in grade eight, elementary up to blind last year. Now I am back in grade three. In this year, I plan to check my uniform. Now I want to show according to the salesman lawyer. I mean, talk about this last shot. Now for Wonville, I mean, cost twenty five kilo or one plus. Nah, browser plan by cost thirty five kilo. Nah, me need in two plus seventy. I'm now yet. I'm looking for some two plus one plus browser. One plus seventy. I sell about sixty kilo. Another set kilo. I'm about hundred and twenty kilo. Lay Sports Store has been an ideal tailoring shop in town for parents seeking school uniforms for their children. Fleming Yap will be doing his grade six at the Saint Paul's Primary School in Lay. He chose to get his new set of school uniforms here. My name is Fleming Yap. I'm attending St. Paul's Primary School, grade 6. This year, I'm looking for my uniform. Me and my mom. And my small brother. I'm feeling very excited. How have you uh, the holidays? How was your holidays? My holiday is fine. I went to my mom's village. Many students that we have talked to said they want to achieve better academic results than those from previous years. Others say this year will be a new milestone in their schoolwork. The enthusiasm to achieve good grades at the end of every year is what many have been dreaming of. Maureen Huai Gori is a student from the St. Mary's Primary School in Lay City. Maureen dreams of becoming the first Papua New Guinean astronaut to be working in Earth's outer space in future. Schooling is class, so I want to um, school and achieve my dream in the future. So I already set my goals. Do you have goals? Yeah, I have goals, I said. So I want to achieve that goal. When I'm going after grade 8? Um, I want to I wanna go to late, like doing grade 9 and late 7. Morabe has a total of five.